The movie starts with small debris falling in a dark, gloomy forest. Then, we see a lifeless body with a gun nearby, and in the background, a scrawny cat is scavenging for food to fill its tummy. A few steps away, a man wearing a gas mask named Illy is struggling to breathe and observing the cat. Then, he takes aim with his bow and kills the cat. He takes the dead cat with him and moves through a desolate land. On his way, he discovers an abandoned car with only a skeleton inside. He then enters an abandoned house with the gun in hand but finds no one there. Opening a door to a room, he is surprised to find a dead man, particularly noting the condition of the man's shoes. Billy takes the shoes and wears them, expressing happiness and dancing as if he's not in a post-apocalyptic world. Then, he prepares dinner by cooking the cat, talks to a mouse, feeds it, and listens to music on his iPod while cleaning his knife and gun. After dinner, Ali cleans his scars with a wet wipe from KFC, revealing the hardships he has endured. Then, he unwraps a book and reads until he falls asleep. In the morning, Ali takes a deep breath and, noticing his powerless iPod, continues his journey. Soon, he encounters a broken and traumatized woman who asks for help, but he recognizes her as a potential threat as he has been in such situations before. He calls out for the hijackers to reveal themselves, and they emerge, exposing their hiding spots. They demand Ali's belongings with clear intentions of violence, but he remains unfazed and issues a warning to their leader to keep his hands off. Ignoring his warning, the leader reaches out, and in an instant, Ali slices the man's hand clean. Anger, fear, and shock ripple through the leader, who, with his remaining hand, orders his group to kill Ali. A fight breaks out between them, and Ali emerges victorious, leaving only the woman alive. He gathers useful items and leaves water for her, offering parting words before resuming his westward journey. He continues without missing a beat, observing a couple in trouble with a group of bikers on a destroyed bridge. While part of him desires to help, he remains committed to his path, convinced that their predicament isn't his concern. Further along, he reaches a crossroads and chooses the right path. This choice leads him to a city where a wary community resides. Inside a shop, he's promptly greeted with a gun but he raises his hands to signal his non-hostile intent. After confirming he isn't one of them, he trades a lighter in KFC, wet wipes for a full battery charge. Soon, the same biker group from earlier arrives in town with books for their boss, who's searching for a specific book. Meanwhile, Ali enters a dining hall-like establishment, longing for water. He trades a piece of cloth and gloves for a full water container refill. However, tensions rise when Martz, the biker group's leader, confronts Ali, but Ali aims to avoid trouble. Feeling trapped, he slams Martz's face on the counter and accuses him of murdering the innocent couple earlier. Then, Ali tries to leave, but the entrance is blocked. To escape, he takes down anyone who attacks him. During this, Solara, a woman, intervenes, shouting to stop the chaos. More people arrive on the scene, and Ali reluctantly engages with the boss. They interrogate him about his identity, values, and agenda. At first, Ali refrains from sharing any information that might reveal his true self, but soon he realizes that he and the boss share a commonality of education and civility, leading to an offer of employment by the boss, which Ali declines in favor of his westward journey. After this, the boss insists that Ali stays the night, offering a warm bed, food, and water. He agrees, feeling he has little choice. After some time, a blind woman enters the room, providing food and water. When asked about her blindness, she explains that she was born that way. The woman informs the boss that Ali is different and won't be swayed as easily. The boss, however, believes otherwise and sends Solara to Ali's room. She enters wearing a revealing nightgown and makes advances toward him. Ali respectfully declines her, opening the door for her to leave, but she pleads with him, expressing her fears for her mother, the blind woman, as the boss, Carnegie, intends to harm her. Then, Solara offers to sleep on the floor and suggests that Ali should lie to Carnegie by claiming that they slept together. Watching Solara please like that, Ali agrees to help her, and they engage in a conversation about the world before the apocalypse. Solara becomes curious about the book Ali is hiding and he asks her where they get their water. However, she insists on sharing water source information only if he reveals details about the book. The night progresses with them sharing a meal and praying together, creating a semblance of a date. When morning arrives, Solara reports to Carnegie and prays before having breakfast with her mother. He interrupts the prayer and interrogates Solara, asking her about the book's appearance and whether she has read it. Solara refuses to answer his question, prompting Carnegie to resort to violence against her mother to compel Solara to talk. Eventually, she breaks down and describes the book with a leather cover and a crucifix on the front. After hearing about the book, Carnegie and his men embark on a search for Ali, but he has already left. 
Upon finding him nowhere, Carnegie's right-hand man shoots the guard who is unaware of Ali's departure. Meanwhile, Ali retrieves the battery from the shop and steps out to find Carnegie and his men. Carnegie demands the book, revealing his intent to kill Ali for it. Then, he covets the book's power, rooted in faith and belief, and proposes the idea of a community united by faith, and the equitable distribution of the book. Ali too expresses a desire for such a world but not with Carnegie. After this, Carnegie orders his right-hand man to shoot Ali, but each bullet seems to miss or graze him. Soon, chaos erupts as Ali shoots with incredible accuracy, eliminating their men while miraculously avoiding any harm as if divinely protected. Finally, Ali hits Carnegie in the leg with a shotgun, marking the end of the intense confrontation. Now, only Ali and the right-hand man remain and the latter lowers his gun, permitting Ali to depart. In the meantime, Solara follows Ali, expressing her determination to accompany him. She captures his attention with a single phrase, telling him that she can lead him to their water source. Ali agrees to this and together they visit a spring. After spending some time there, Ali decides to leave but as they leave, Ali claims to have forgotten his sunglasses inside the cave. Solara obligingly goes in, allowing him to lock her in from the other side. Then, Ali explains that the road is no place for someone like her, to which she responds with an unpleasant curse word. Meanwhile, Carnegie is in agony as his leg is tended to. He announces his intention to pursue Ali, though his right-hand man is puzzled by their pursuit of a mere book. Then, the right-hand man offers a deal, promising his unwavering loyalty in exchange for Solara, a proposition that elicits laughter from Carnegie. Then, they prepare their vehicles and embark on their westward journey to track down Ali. Meanwhile, Solara finds herself stranded on the road and she encounters a familiar scene when a woman pleads for help. Solara offers her assistance, but the injured woman initially rejects it, suggesting that she doesn't need help, and asks her to leave. The situation escalates as the woman's stubbornness leads to her being accosted by two thugs. In her distress, she calls for help, and hopelessness takes hold. Just in time, an arrow pierces through one of the thugs' pants, and Ali arrives at the scene, rescuing her. After this incident, Carnegie and his men arrive at the location where Solara was attacked by the thugs. They decide to make camp for the night and plan to resume their pursuit of Ali early the next morning. Meanwhile, Ali sits down to read his book while Solara expresses her curiosity. She asks if he reads the book every day and requests him to read some of it to her. Ali agrees and starts a sermon, resembling a priest delivering a sermon to his congregation. He explains that the book is unique because all other copies have turned to ashes, and its words and lessons are mere memories for some. Then, he goes on to recount the events before, during, and after the war, describing how the sky opened up and incinerated everything and everyone, leaving only a fortunate few, including himself. After this, Ali recounts how he found the book, describing a mysterious voice guiding him to it under a pile of rubble. The voice instructed him to journey west on an endless walk. As Ali and Solara continue on the road, Carnegie signals his men to stop, and they enter an abandoned nuclear power plant where Ali and Solara previously took shelter. During their journey, Solara learns that Ali has been walking for over 30 years and has never felt lost, as his faith guides him, and his direction is not solely determined by sight. After some time, the pair come across an abandoned house and they approach it cautiously, with Ali leading. However, they soon fall into a trap when the door opens, revealing an elderly couple. The old man threatens them, but the old woman extends an act of kindness and invites them inside for tea. A bond begins to form during their conversation, and the elderly man later shows them a line of graves. Lee and Solara become suspicious, assuming the graves contain the remains of people the couple killed and consumed, especially as the old woman's hands are shaking, suggesting she might be a cannibal. Ali and Solara immediately decide to leave the house, but they soon spot Carnegie and his men. They lock themselves inside the house, and the elderly man reveals a hidden cache of weapons under the couch cushions, anticipating the chaos about to unfold. Carnegie uses a megaphone to demand Solara and the book into their surprise. The book, wrapped in cloth, is thrown out of a window. However, when they attempt to open it, the book turns out to be a makeshift bomb with a timer. The explosion flips a car, resulting in carnage and gunfire. Although they survive the attack, a mounted machine gun joins the battle, making their chances of survival slim. Ali and Solara realize they have no escape, and Ali accepts their fate. Then, Carnegie demands to know the book's location, but Ali remains silent. The search for the book in his bag yields no results so, Carnegie brandishes his gun, testing Ali's resolve, but he remains unafraid. However, Ali is forced to reveal the book's location when Carnegie threatens Solara. 
With the book in Carnegie's hands, Ali's faith falters and when Carnegie pulls the trigger, Ali's faith in his protection wanes. After this, Carnegie leaves with Solara as Ali's journey appears to end. However, Solara takes action, strangling the driver and creating a disturbance in the vehicle. With a grenade, she manages to escape from Carnegie's grasp. Then, Solara drives to the house where Ali was last seen, but he is not there. Meanwhile, Ali has continued his journey along the road to the west, and Solara eventually finds him. Together in the car, they drive toward an unknown destination. Solara apologizes for the trouble she caused and for making Ali give up the book. However, Ali realizes that his decision to relinquish the book was not solely motivated by protecting Solara but by his desire to do more for others than for himself. Carnegie now possesses the locked book, but soon he discovers that it contains no ink. Meanwhile, Ali detects the scent of the ocean, indicating their proximity to the sea. They drive across a bridge, extending over the sea and Solara abruptly hits the brakes. After this, they continue on foot to reach the other side. They find an abandoned boat on the shore and take turns rowing, feeling the cold ocean breeze. Soon, they reach another place and see a man standing on the shore. From afar, the man calls out, cautiously inquiring about their business in the area. Lee introduces himself to the man and claims to possess a King James Bible, even though he does not have one. Back in the city, the engineer from the shop struggles to unlock the sealed Bible. Meanwhile, Ali and Solara manage to enter the heavily guarded area. They are greeted by a man and a group of people, books, and machinery. This organization's goal is to preserve and disseminate knowledge to the remaining human population. In the meantime, Carnegie finally opens the locked Bible, only to discover it is written in Braille. Now, it is revealed that Ali is blind, which is a profound irony as he proclaims, let there be light while being unable to see the light. Ali has read and memorized it over 30 years and recites the book of Genesis verse by verse. Meanwhile, in a last-ditch effort to acquire the word of God, Carnegie summons Solara's blind mother. She touches the braille but cannot recall how to interpret it. Carnegie's infected leg deteriorates further, leaving him weak and alone. Seeing him in a miserable condition, Solara's mother taunts him, highlighting that he is reaping what he has sown. Meanwhile, Carnegie sits, leaning against a railing, witnessing the disintegration of everything he built. Lee, on the other hand, becomes a priest, speaking his message of gratitude regarding his journey. To the West ends with God as his destination. However, with this, a new journey also arises as Solara with Lee's blade and iPod finds her way back home. The end, thank you for watching, be sure like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this, also let us know what movie you would love us recap for you.